Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we're going to face Newcastle and Fulham both in the Premier League and of course we've got some fixtures to review since the last time we met. Following on from our 1-0 opening day victory against Bournemouth was a 0-0 away draw against Brentford. A uh, bit of a topsy-turvy game, both sides having opportunities to actually score, neither side taking it. A point was a fair result. Next up was a 3-0 home win against Norwich City. It was a very, very even game up until Buendia got sent off in the 54th minute for Norwich and then we started to take control. Uh, McBurney put us in front in the 69th minute, John Fleck and Luca Pellegrini completing the score. We then had the home tie against Plymouth in the League Cup second round where we did rotate a little bit but not too much because I do want to at least get to the fourth round of this competition to match our board's expectations. Mousset, Ender Stevens, Billy Sharp, John Fleck and balled up with the goals. Next was a 1-0 home defeat against Chelsea. It was actually a very, very good game by us. The first half in particular, we did dominate and I thought maybe if we'd nicked one goal or two, we might have got the three points here. But Tammy Abraham got a goal for Chelsea in the 68th and we could not get back into it. We then went away from home against Southampton and suffered a disappointing 2-1 defeat. Manuel Lanzini scored in the 93rd minute for them to give them the three points after Jean-Pierre had got a late equaliser in the 86th minute. But it wasn't a B, we got nothing. We then hosted Watford at home. Jean-Pierre equalised after Joe Pedro scored in the 7th minute, 8th minute for Jean-Pierre. Uh, and that was it for pretty much for the rest of the match. It was a pretty dull game. And another draw at home is a little bit disappointing. These are the sort of sides that we've got to be looking at getting three points from, especially at home. And finally, we play Blackpool in the third round of the League Cup. Again, playing a slightly rotated side, not too much, and winning 2-0. Baldock and Jean-Pierre with the goals, both in the second half. So this is how the Premier League table looks after those set of fixtures. We currently sit in 12th position on 8 points. We do have a game in hand on pretty much everybody. And the first game of today's episode is against Newcastle, who you can see are in 18th position. So... You never know, a good result today and we could really, really climb up into the top half of the division. So we are away from home in both games today, so it is going to be tough, but hopefully we can get some points out of it. This is how we're going to line up against Newcastle. Jack Butland in goal, Kerrer, Angine and O'Connell in the back, Baldock and Pellegrini as the wing-backs, Norwood and Fleck in the centre with Jean-Pierre in behind McBurney and Esposito who has been a little bit disappointing after that. He scored in the first game of the season, but he's developing really, really nicely. As you can see, his attributes, particularly physicals, are f absolutely flying up. Uh, mentally and technically, he's doing great as well. So, despite him not performing particularly well, we're going to persist um, just to continue his development. That's why he was brought here, and I'm going to keep going with it. But let's submit this team and get into the game against Newcastle. So Newcastle, Newcastle come out with a 5-2-3 formation with the wingers rather than the second striker and attacking midfielder. So it should be interesting to see how we line up against this sort of team. How we'll perform. Let's get in the kickoff. 12 and a half minutes in, we finally get our first highlight of the game. And it is us not in possession. Because Wanyama just dispossesses Baldock and sets away Greenwood on this right-hand side. He's in behind. Butland with a great save, but it falls to Joel Linton to get his third goal of the season and put Newcastle 1-0 up 13 minutes in. A little bit disappointing to lose the ball the way we did there. Baldock in an, in an advanced position, which we expect him to be. But um, it's always a little bit of a risk because we've got our wing-backs pushing forward. There's only three men in the defence, so if we do get caught in the counter, it is very, very difficult for us to get back in time and be able to put in the challenges that is needed. So a dominating start by Newcastle to uh, start things off with, but hopefully we can get back into this game. Pick with another highlight here, Jean-Pierre in the centre picks it up, finds Fleck, Pellegrini on the left hand side, Esposito picks it up in the air, Jean-Pierre, he's got the overlap from Baldock if he needs him but he gets dispossessed by Newcastle and we have to start again. Back to Jean-Pierre, Pellegrini on this left hand side this time, get the ball in the box, back to John Fleck, don't lose it, he takes the strike and what a goal that is my son, his third goal of the season, an assist for Luca Pellegrini. And that is just an absolutely fabulous strike. Probably the best goal we've scored so far this season. There hasn't been many, so that's not too much of a surprise. But uh, absolutely great. Gets past his man and a lovely, lovely curled finish in at the bottom corner. Nothing the Newcastle goalkeeper is going to do about that 1-1. Another highlight now, we'll have the ball in our defensive line. 
Hopefully no calamities and we're going to build something. O'Connell with a big punt up top and McBurney brings it down lovely and finds Baldock further back. He's not going to go try and beat his man this time. Norwood gives it away to one yard, my though, and Newcastle have got Pierce on the wings and they are just breaking constantly. St. Maximin gets in the box, gets his strike on, but Jack Butland manages to keep him out. Highlight now, Baldock on this right-hand side. This has all come from Newcastle's first chance and Esposito, he heard us speaking about him, so he managed to get his second goal of the season. He knew he has to step up a little bit and start giving us a little bit more. And he gets the goal to put us in front 27 minutes in. A great cross by Baldock. He has been probably our best player so far this season at right wing back. Doing absolutely fantastic work. I think that's his seventh assist of the season so far. And Esposito does the business to put us up in front. We'll highlight now, Jolinton's in behind, he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, goes for the dink. Absolutely terrible, terrible decision to go for that. If he gets that anywhere on target, he's going to make Jack Butland work for the goal. But uh, he didn't do it, try to be cocky. Highlight now, Pellegrini on this left-hand side, bringing the ball down. He's closed down by the Newcastle player, manages to get by him and the ball's played in and Jean-Pierre is there. He gets his fourth goal of the season. Uh, Sebastiano Esposito somehow accredited with the assist there. I think the initial ball played in by Pellegrini ends up his hitting Esposito somehow and then falling to Jean-Pierre. We don't care though. 3-1 up inside the first half. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. It was headed down by Esposito and Jean-Pierre with a great finish. And now we have at the end of the first half, Newcastle taking the lead pretty early on, but we've absolutely bounced back brilliantly and done great to go in at halftime. 3-1 up. Definitely, after their goal, one of the best performances of the season so far in terms of pure clinicalness. We haven't been this clinical at all this season. 65 minutes in now, and there is another highlight. We pinch the ball in the midfield. Please don't give it away. Kerry switches the ball to the left-hand side for Pellegrini. He switches the ball again back to Baldock. It seems to be a common theme in this year's football manager. Baldock plays the ball in, falls to Pellegrini on the edge. What's he going to do? He finds Jean-Pierre, who goes for goal, and it goes just wide. With only 15 or so minutes to go, we'll look to make some changes. We'll bring on Chris Basham in centre of midfield for Oliver Norwood. We really are lacking strength and depth there. And we'll bring on Kieran Freeman on for George Baldock. And that right wing back roll. Corner for us. Jean-Pierre plays it in. Who's that? McBurney on the edge. He hits the crossbar. That would have been great towards our board objective, making the most of set pieces. Another highlight now. A free kick for Newcastle this time with only five minutes on the clock. St. Maximum finds Malqui. Uh, Chris Basham gets the challenge and we can break now. Oliver McBurney, there's absolutely no Newcastle defenders anywhere near him. If he doesn't score this, it's broken. But he does, and he puts us 4-1 up. McBurney's second goal of the season. 4-1 away from home against any side in this league is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic result. Obviously, I'm speaking a bit soon here, but Newcastle absolutely pushed everybody up for that free kick. So the fact that they lost the ball in the position that they did is absolute... It's absolute suicide, really. And McBurney makes no mistake. One up, first one-on-one -on -one I've ever seen go in, to be honest with you. But we'll take it. 4-1. Another highlight now. Jean-Pierre with a free kick. And we've hit the bar again. Pretty much the exact same situation, except from the corner last time. And now we have at Newcastle 1, Sheffield United 4. Our best result in the league this season, without a shadow of a doubt. Let's get to the Fulham game. Oh, and before we get into that though, we have moved up to 8th position on 11 points. 3 wins, 2 draws, 2 defeats. A very good start for us. So we're here for the Fulham game. The only change in today's lineup is John Egan comes in to replace the injured Angine. Otherwise, everything is the same. Away from home against Fulham. Let's get into it. So they come at us with a 4-2-3-1. An interesting um, side with the likes of Andros Townsend. Mitrovic, of course, I had a look at him. Um, when us were looking for strikers in the January transfer window of last summer, it would have cost far too much money. But uh, they still got a lot of players that they had when they were last in the Premier League, so they'll still be a good side. We'll have to be at our best if we're to get a victory today. First highlight of the game, four minutes in, and Sessegnon on the right-hand side for Fulham. Finds Brian on the edge, plays back to Sessegnon. That, that's the weirdest one too you're ever going to see. Andros Townsend with a strike, hits the post. We managed to get at the first ball and managed to get a clear. Early scare for us. Another highlight now, and it's also currently in possession with ball docked. Back to Kara. Please, no mistakes. McBurney finds Pellegrini on the left-hand side. Esposito's got so much space. Uh, he doesn't manage to find him, but a false. No, but on the edge, who goes for goal. 
and what a strike that is. Bettinelli does his absolute best to try and keep that out from Oliver Norwood, but he had no chance. That was an absolutely thunder strike, and he puts us 1-0 up. This was the pass here, but uh, he ends up overhitting it a little bit, but it's false to Norwood, and he makes no mistake. Bettinelli gets his hand to it, but it's not enough. Sheffield United 1, Fulham 0. 25 minutes or so in now and there is another highlight. It's Fulham on the attack this time with Brian on the left hand side receiving the ball from a switch from Surrey. Back to Kent. There's not very much movement from the Fulham boys but they are switching the play quite nicely. Sessegnon on the right hand side gets dispossessed but he finds it again. Who is... Where is this going lads? Andros turns up with a strike. Oh man. Butland. Butland, Butland, Butland. Should he be keeping that out? I think he probably should be. I think he gets his hand to it. But it wasn't enough to keep out Andros Townsend's strike. We'll take another look at it on the replay and see if we can definitely blame Butland or not. And Geese at Townsend. Butland, I mean, it's, it's a tricky one without being able to see it from different angles and stuff. We'll just presume that was a wonder strike and he had no chance. Now we have at half time Fulham 1, Sheffield United 1. A pretty even game so far as the match stats go as well. No changes from us. We'll kick off in the second half. Another highlight now, Jean-Pierre coming away with the ball after winning possession deep in our own half. He's driving all the way down the right-hand side. He finds McBurney in the box. What's he going to do? He finds Norwood on the edge. Goes for his second goal of the game. Would have been an absolute another wonder strike, but it wasn't a bay this time. Highlight now, O'Connell with the ball down the line for Esposito on the left-hand side. He's brought down by Odoi, who was on a yellow card as well. Surely that is his second yellow. It doesn't look like he's actually going to give him it, or is he? He's definitely given the penalty. And here he goes to Adoy. That should be Fulham down to 10 men at this point. And we can hopefully go 2-1 up here. There we are. There's the there's the red card. And who is it that's stepping up? It is John Fleck stepping up from the penalty spot to put us in front in the 63rd minute. And there it is. Sheffield United 2, Fulham 1. They're down to 10 men. John Fleck's fourth goal of the season. Now we just need to hold on to it. Another highlight now straight away. And it's Fulham on the attack once again. Angisa tries to get dispossessed but goes goes for the strike just over the bar. 15 minutes on the clock. There is another highlight and it's also on the attack this time with Pellegrini on the left hand side. Plays it all the way out to Norwood in the centre of the midfield. Baldock don't dilly dally on the ball for too long Baldock. The ball finds its way to John Fleck and Jean-Pierre in the centre who keep the ball quite nicely. Baldock with a, a stupid header who gives the ball away but Esposito has got it in the box now. Bettinelli manages to keep it out. McBurney goes for goal and hits a post. Uh, we'll look to make some subs. Baldock can come off. Um, we'll look to get Kieran Freeman on on the right hand side for him. And Ender Stevens can come on for Luca Pellegrini on that left hand side as well. Keep our boys fresh on the wing back rolls. Five minutes to go in this, in this one. Hopefully we can hold out here. Don't give the ball away. Nothing too stupid lads. And we should be coming out of this game with a... Another three points. Two back-to-back -back away wins will be absolutely huge for us. But we do give the ball away. It's Oliver Norwood. But McBurney wins it back. John Pierre's there. Esposito's running through, please. Uh, he misses, misses the opportunity for the pass. Fulham managed to get back in numbers and win the ball back. Oh, lovely ball through by Sarri. Mitrovic is in behind. He goes for goal from distance. Butland with a big save. It was offside anyway, so it wouldn't have counted even if it did go in. Well, that was a one and shot. And this looks like it will be the final highlight of the game, hopefully, uh, without any goals plays. Brian goes for it, goes over the bar. Um, and that should be three points for us now, please. And there we are, full time, Fulham 1, Sheffield United 2, Oliver Norwood and John Fleck getting us the goals to give us another three points. Back-to-back -back away wins in the Premier League against any sides in this league is absolutely unbelievable. We've done brilliant there to get six points out of six. And after that win, we actually enter the European spots. We're not going to finish there, but we've entered them. We're currently sitting in 6th position with 14 points. A plus 6 goal difference, which is nice to see as well. Sometimes when you're maybe a little bit overperforming in the league, your goal difference tells the true story. But plus 6 is nice as well. And 2 really good wins against Newcastle and Fulham. Looking forward to when we might come back the next episode. It might be maybe Leicester-Burnley in the November period. It is... Um, 2020 Qatar is 2022 you'd have to get why have I only got two games in November then that's strange must be a big international thing happening 
at the beginning of November, but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll uh, might even play past that point and look towards some of the games in December. It just depends what happens. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like, and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.